All right. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon and good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Geisler, aka the Geisinator, which uh, which was a little bit cooler 20 years ago when I when I came up with that as my first Yahoo email address. But uh, I'm the maintainer of the Phosphor State Manager repo uh, within OpenBMC. I've been around for for quite a while. I'm not quite as long as some of our, our really old people like Patrick and Brad, but I, I did start out. Um, you know, at the very beginning of the of the Phosphor State Manager repo, and uh, and as a part of Phosphor State Manager, we also kind of need to understand System D because it, it utilizes that a lot. So this presentation is going to be an education session over over both of those pieces within OpenBMC. I plan on this being pretty informal, and I'll try to leave some pauses here and there. So if you got a question, just just ask it as we go. Um, yeah, just shout it out. All right, let's start with System D. So System D, love it or hate it, it is utilized in a lot of Linux um, distributions out there, including OpenBMC. Uh, it was the replacement for, I think it was called System V or something like that back in the day. Um, but it provides a lot of function and a lot of different things within it. So it's a software suite um, of features you know, that, that you can use within Linux subsystems. Uh, our, our main use of it is for starting and synchronizing our user space services. So all of the different open BMC applications and all of the packages and, and tools that we pull in from other areas are all started and synchronized by system D. Um, this picture, which I, I think I just stole from Wikipedia shows a lot of the different areas. So you've got, um, the utilities at the top here. So system control and journal control are two, two tools you always want to be very familiar with. Um, they're what you use to interact with the, the different system D functions. So the journal is also provided by system D and the journal is where you see all the debug data go that we look at to, to debug systems. Uh, there's a bunch of daemons that run. So the system D and the journal D are the, the two key ones for us. Although I, I assume the network one is also pretty important. Um, these, there's these concepts of services and targets. So I think that's a really key piece for people that are new to System D to understand. And a lot of this presentation is, is based on these. So within System D, you have what we call services, and there will be examples of these later on. But these are what basically start your application. Um, and then we have this concept of targets within System D. And so a target is. Um, for example, a target could be start the network interface. And so what a target does is it is it abstracts all the different services that need to run to achieve that target's goal. So you could have a lot of different services that are involved in bringing up the network. And so basically once all of those services are complete, you know, this target would be complete. And so we have within OpenBMC some very, um, you know, we have our own custom targets, system D targets and services that go in those targets. Um, from a terminology perspective, there's also basically everything is called a unit within system D. So both a target and a service are units. So on the bottom right here, you can see a system booting. And so you'll see this is a, the console of the BMC. And I think this was a, like a Witherspoon system booting up open BMC. And so you can see things like, you know, reach the target network. So we have run all of the services associated with the network target, you know, and they started successfully. And so in theory, at this point, you know, your network is, is up and online. Um, you can see other stuff. I think there's some some BMC, open BMC specific, specific stuff like the web server. You can see the BMC web server starting here. Um, and uh, other pieces and functions. And, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that comes out. It really shows you all the different things that launch when you, when you boot up a, one of these BMCs. The other key piece of system D and that we utilize a lot is templating. So these services and targets can be templated and that's just uh, I'll show an example later, but that's just really saying that, um, you know, it's a way to make your services and targets more generic. So maybe you've got two network interfaces, ETH zero and ETH one, and you need to do something, you know, on each of those interfaces, but sometimes only ETH zero is there and sometimes only ETH one is there. So you can use a templated service that, does the same thing and you basically pass in which ethernet interface you wanted to do the operation on. So that's the, the basic idea of templates. Any questions out there on my really down and dirty overview of system D? All right, 
So Phosphor State Manager. So this is in the OpenBMC repo. So SystemD is its own package. It's a huge, um, huge open source project. And we just basically pull that in as a part of our, our Yocto um, updates. All right, it's all a part of Yocto BitBake. So Phosphor State Manager is something that we in OpenBMC own, um, sometimes called short for P PSM as the abbreviation here. So PSM really started out as a wrapper around SystemD and a way to provide some specific open BMC based targets and services to, to boot up a, a BMC and to boot up the system that the BMC is contained in. So these targets and services we'll, we'll talk a little bit about later, but basically they're provided by the Foster State Manager repository. Um, there's also a lot of, of stuff that we put into the multi-user target. So that's the, the system D target that is basically run when a BMC first comes up. So that's where you launch all of your services and targets that you want to be running by default when the BMC hits what we call its, its ready state. Um, PSM provides uh, the generic services and targets that any, anybody within OpenBMC uh, could find useful. Um, but there's a lot of company specific stuff, right? You know, a lot of systems have a very specific way you power on the chassis or that you boot the host. And so the way it works is you put those out in your, your meta layer, those different um, things that you need to, to, for your specific system and you install them in those common open BMC targets. So there's a lot of questions too around x86 power control. So this is uh, this is my biased opinion from somebody that isn't involved in it. But um, to me, it, it was it was very specific to x86 at the time that it was created, and it was, um, from my understanding, you know, PSM does just utilize System D, and so System D does not have great real time functions and real quick response times, right? It's just a bunch of services that you put dependencies on to boot a system. And so that didn't have the, the fun features and functions that were really needed for some of the, the x86 servers early on. So um, x86 power control hosts some of, the, some of the DBUS interfaces that PSM does, it doesn't host all of them. And so you'll actually see some systems that, that pull in some pieces of PSM, like the BMC management or the uh, service state management function. And then they'll use x86 power control for their chassis and, and host control. And I think, you know, the last bullet there is, is that, you know, x86 power control is, is in a lot of ways simpler because system D is, uh, is not simple. Um, it provides an infinite amount of ways to do things, but with that comes a lot of, uh, comes a lot of complexity over it, with it. All right, so let's dig into it a little bit here. So Phosphor State Manager, I, I, I said earlier, provides systemd targets and services. Um, standard ones that we've, the feeling is everybody's system could utilize. And so one thing that, that confuses a lot of people is when it comes to the targets, there's actually two different types of target. There's what we call an action target. And so this is what I've basically been talking about, where you, you take a group of services to you know, power on your chassis or start your host or get your network up. And you take all those services and you put it in a target, right? So you say, when I start this target, I want you to start all of these services. So that's an action target. Um, but then there's this other type of target that we call, or that I call a synchronization target. So this target doesn't actually have any services that if you start it, it will go and start. Synchronization target is something that services use to synchronize how they execute. So maybe you say, I want to power on the chassis. Within powering on the chassis, there's actually a few sub steps that you need to run. You know, all those services are going to be started all at the same time, basically by system D, unless you have some sort of dependency sit in them. And so uh, at the bottom here, you can see these, these synchronization targets say, hey, um, I know we're starting the power. So this is the OBMC power start. But there are certain services that really need to run before we actually turn the power on. So maybe there's some power workarounds that need to work. Maybe there's some VRM adjustments that need to happen before you, you, you turn on the full power of the system. So, so those services would say, I need to run uh, basically before this target completes, the synchronization target. Um, and then there'd be a group of services, for example, the service that actually turns on the chassis power that would say, well, I need to run after all of that start pre stuff happens, but I need to run before we consider the power to really be on the system. So that would be the second target. 
And I think that was um, this 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 concept was modeled off of I think the network driver. So when you turn on the network, there are certain services that need to run before the network link actually comes up, and then there are services that need to run to actually bring the network service up. And then there's even like a post um, synchronization with the network where there are things that need to run after the network you know link has actually been turned on. So um, basically, OpenBMC modeled these these synchronization targets based on that. So in here we've got a mix. So um, the, the you know one of the most important targets in the in the OpenBMC world is the OBMC chassis power on target. So this is the target that has all the services required to power on your system. Uh, there's a power off as well here. There's a power reset. Um, so this is how you handle basically if the chassis power is already on at, and the BMC has been rebooted. And then we've got the host start, the OBMC host start. So this is the services required to start your host. Um, there's the start min. This was introduced uh, after the start where we found scenarios where if you're doing like a, a reboot of your system, you, you don't want to run some of the stuff as if it was a fresh boot you know, like clearing certain config data or BIOS values or stuff like that. So that's why you see kind of this, this host start and this host start min. So host start min is the minimum things you need to really start your host. And so basically this host start target, you know, it requires this host start min. So that's the design you'll see within system D is targets can require other targets. Uh, the host shutdown is what you start to have a graceful shutdown of your host. So you put the services in there that would notify the host, hey, you need to you need to shut yourself down. Um, and then host stop is is which the services that are run to really make sure the host is stopped, like you know, stopping instructions out to the CPU kind of thing. And then I gave a few examples of synchronization targets uh, that we were just talking about. This power start pre and, and power start piece here. Um, there's a lot more out there. Um, there's they're documented up in the the PSM README, but it's all the same principle. You know, like host start has a has a host start pre and and uh, start, and then I think it might even have a post. All right, any questions on? Targets, action and synchronization targets within OpenBMC, Phosphor State Manager. All right. So here we go. Let's get into the into the good stuff here. So this is a Witherspoon system, which was one of our first OpenBMC servers. Um, so what I'm looking at here is so all of, or the majority of our OpenBMC systemd targets and services can be found out in this live systemd system directory. There are some exceptions. Um, you'll also see some out in slash etc systemd system. Um, but for the most part, our services and targets are, are out in this directory, along with a, a, a lot of systemd, you know, included targets and function. So what we're looking at here is the OBMC chassis power on target. So this is a templated target. So the idea with the templates is that you could, in theory, be running a BMC that has multiple chassis in it that you can control the power to independently. So if you did the, in that fact have that, then you would, you know, you could power on, you could call this target with a zero or a one or a two or whatever the instance numbers of the chassis are in your system. For most systems, it's just zero, which basically is, you know, the power on E chassis in the system. And um, you can see that it's a target by the end of the file here. And the dot requires is saying these are all the services that need to run when somebody starts the power on target. Um, one thing to note with system D targets is that there's a dot requires and there's a dot wants. So they all both will start the services, but if a service within a dot requires fails, then the target will be considered to have failed. So, you know, the general rule is if that service has to pass for that target to complete, you put it in the requires. If it's a if it's a nice to have, you would put it in the dot wants um, for it. So it wouldn't cause that target to fail. I.e., the system would still be considered powered on, and you could you know boot your host firmware or whatever, even if that service in the dot wants fails. So within this target. 
you know, this is just looking at a BMC file system, uh, which is one of my favorite ways to go out and, and really understand what's going on with the BMC system. You can see all the different uh, services that needed to run in order to power on a Witherspoon. So Witherspoon was one of our first systems. So you can see we ended up putting uh, quite a few different um, workarounds and, and features and functions in here. But I think it does show the power of, of system D and the ability to have all these services and put the appropriate dependencies between them so that you can kind of run all of these pieces individually and successfully power on your system. And you can see that some of these do have templates. So some of these services are very specific to the target and some are more, you always run these type services. So if you don't see the, the at something number here, that just means it's a service that is pretty much universal. All right, on to the next page. So this is looking at a service within um, OpenBMC. So this is a generic service um, that can be run to power on your system, assuming it implements the appropriate power control Dbus interface. So I haven't talked too much about that. That's a whole other conversation, but OpenBMC does utilize Dbus as its IPC mechanism. And so it's it's the way that you know all the different services and applications within BMC talk to each other. So that provides a lot of abstraction. Um, so in this case, this service basically makes a generic call to something implementing a power control interface to power on the chassis. And so as long as your system implement something that has that Dbus interface, however you power your system on, um, that uh, makes this a generic service. And that's that's one of the powers of, of Dbus and uh, Mapper, which I'll talk about here in a sec. But all right, so when you look at a service file, it basically has three sections um, from our use case perspective. There's the unit, which is kind of your generic uh, area. This is, remember I said at the beginning that a unit can be a, uh, is basically a service and a target and a lot of other things within system D. It's your it's your base uh, piece. And so from a from a unit perspective, um, that's where you really define your dependencies of your service. So you've got a description, and this description at the top is what will show up in the journal. So you'll see that start power on for chassis. And anywhere you see this percent I, it's basically you know, the value that's passed into the template. So this, for all intents and purposes here, you can just pretend it's a zero. So it'd be for chassis zero that you would see in the journal. And within the journal, you'll see um, a starting and started uh, for the different services to say, hey, I've started this. And then once it completes, um, you'll see the started. So we've got this concept of wants and before and wants and after within dependencies. And so really all you're just saying is that this service wants this target and it needs to run before that target's complete. So this is one of those um, synchronization targets that we looked at. So we're looking at the service that actually turns power on to the chassis. And so it's saying, hey, I, I'm responsible for powering on the chassis. And so for this synchronization target to be complete, you know, I need it and I need to make sure that I'm completed, that, that my service completes before we consider that target to be complete. And so that's that's what this line is saying right here. These two lines are saying. Now on the flip side, these next two lines are saying, hey, I also want the, the power start pre, but I need to run after that target because all of the services that run before that target are the services that are prepping for the power on. So before we actually, you know, flip the switch to turn the chassis power on, um, we run all those services in this start pre. So this service is saying, well, don't run me until that target is complete. Um, we've also got a section here saying, you know, that this needs to run after the fan control. You want to make sure your fan control is up and running before you turn on the chassis power. Um, this one, these two lines here, the mapper weight is kind of a kind of a nuance within OpenBMC. So at a high level, there's a repository with OpenBMC called Phosphor Object Manager. And basically what the, and we call it Mapper, um, basically what Mapper does is it scans Dbus. So it, it looks for all the interfaces added and removed, which is a, basically when you, when you start a new service and you provide a Dbus object, 
it's a new interface that shows up on dbus and so the mapper will basically introspect and investigate that and it will keep a database it keeps a little mini database where it says all right this this service over here is hosting this dbus interface and so what applications within OpenBMC can do is go and say, instead of trying to do all that introspection and determination themselves, they can call Mapper and say, hey, I want to know which service is providing this interface. And so that's what you use Mapper for. And so within a service file, you can say, well, I don't, I don't want my service to start until after Mapper has detected this interface um, out on Dbus. So there's a bit of debate within the community on whether this is the right way to do this. You could also argue that this service should just handle waiting for that for that object to show up in, within Mapper. Um, it's a little bit more uh, flexible that way because right now maybe you say, "Oh, I want to wait for this this interface to show up." It does show up, but then it disappears, and now your code assumes it's there. And so there's a bit of debate, but right now this 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 is the way it works so you can basically say i don't want to serve i don't want to start my service until this this control power interface shows up on dbus and why is that well that's because when you look down below we're calling that dbus interface to power on the system so it's just a simple way to say wait for it to wait for it to be available for me to call and system d will make sure that this service doesn't continue to run until these dependencies are met all right the conflicts is saying, I want to stop this service when this target starts. So this target is a part of the power on process, or this service is a part of the power on target. And so kind of intuitive that says, well, if I power off the system, I want to stop this target. And so that'll, that's what will happen. When the, when the chassis is powered off, system D will actually stop this service. And I say, well, why does it matter if we stop this service? You have to stop the service because if you power on the system again, you want the service to run again. And if it's already running, then it won't run again. System D won't start it again. So you wouldn't actually power the chassis on. So you need to make sure you get your correct conflicts in place um, when you're doing services like this. This other piece, we really got quite the service here. So the condition path exists. So this is how we deal with the scenario where your system's booted, your chassis power is on, and for whatever reason, the BMC is reset. So if that occurs, you want the BMC to come back up and you want it to say that chassis power is on, but you don't actually want it to run the service that turns power on again. That could cause a lot of different issues depending on your system. And so within Phosphor State Manager, there are there's a function which basically detects it. It goes out and it looks at pgood and it says, oh, power's on. And if it sees power is on, it'll go out and it'll create this file in the, in the file system. And so this file being present indicates to other services like this one that power is already on and it shouldn't run. So when this path hits, the condition path exists. So we will only run if this file does not exist. So that's the, that's the exclamation point here. So if the file does exist, system D will consider this service as started, but will not actually have run the function down below here. So you'll see this in a few of the different service files out there. And it's, it's how we handle this scenario where the, where the system is, where the BMC is rebooted and, and power the host is still running. All right, so those were the unit specific pieces and it's really dependencies and, and what do I need to really start this service? So the service section is really where you start to say, um, what am I gonna do when I actually am started and all those things up above are, are, are successful? So, and this is, there's a lot of system D variables and flags and things that I'm not talking about, you know, similar to the target, there's, you know, you can do a wants or you can do a requires, um, which will kind of dictate whether your service will start if that dependency fails or not. Um, but we're not going to go into all the details today. There's there's a lot of documentation out there. I'm really trying to focus on the pieces from a BMC perspective, what we utilize. So the remain after exit is saying, hey, once this service starts, do I consider it to be con continued running? And this is to handle, and so this is kind of the, the conflicts part I was talking about earlier. So 
Yes. In general, you want yes, because you can run into nuances where, you know, a target, if a target were to get started multiple times, like the power on target, um, and you don't have this to yes, then your service would run again just automatically. And so kind of saying yes gives you more control where you can say, I want this to be running until I know it should stop. And that's where you can use the, that's where you use the conflicts piece. Um, the type, there's a, there's a variety of types. In this case, the one shot is basically saying that this service shouldn't be considered complete until it has, until the command I've given it for the exec start has completed. So um, this, this can vary. It depends on your service. If you've got a long running service that starts uh, like fan control or power management stuff, then you probably don't do the one shot because um, it's not going to return. It's going to keep running. And that might be more of a debuff service. Uh, but in this case, we are just running a single command line that we want. Um, we don't want this service to be considered complete until it returns, should be the powers on. The exec start is where, you know, the meat happens. So this is where you really say, this is what I want this service to do. And, and a lot of times this is, you know, start my application. Like Foster State Manager has three or four different service files, and it's basically just starting the different the different applications that run continuously to monitor and control the state of the different pieces it monitors. But in this case, this is really just a shell script. And so you can see we're calling bus control. So bus control is a command line interface for doing dbus. Definitely a useful tool that everybody's going to want to understand. Um, but basically, it's doing a call, and it's using, um, it's using a mapper call to find the service that hosts this interface. So it goes a mapper get service. So there's a mapper command line tool where you can say, hey, get me the service, you know, that's hosting this dbus interface that I'm interested in or this dbus object that I'm interested in. Um, and so basically mapper will return that service because that's the first parameter that you put into the bus control call command is the service. And then you put uh, the object that you're calling and then you put the interface, the dbus interface that you're calling. And then you call, um, I think, is this a property set? No, this is a method call. So then you your method and then your parameters to that method, which in this case is just an integer and it's a one. So you're basically saying, hey, find the, find the service that's hosting the power control interface, call its, its interface um, with basically a one parameter to say, turn the power on. Very simple. This was done way back in the day at the beginnings. Uh, I think we still have an action item to refactor this area a little bit, but it is what it is. And so this is how you really turn on PGood to your system. Um, the syslog identifier is just when you're doing something like this and you're kind of using a shell script or the shell to call a bus control command, you want it to show up properly in the journal and such so you can give it an identifier. And so it'll just associate System D will associate this identifier with running this command. All right, now we've got the install section. Um, so this is saying, where should I put this service? And so this one advice saying, I want you to take this service and put it in the OBMC chassis power on uh, templated dot target. So in theory, you know, we, we looked at the previous page where it had this, um, dot requires, so this is actually kind of interesting because the OBMC power start is um, in here, right? But this is actually in the dot requires. And you might say, well, how did it end up in the dot requires if we say we want it in the wanted? So you can say required by or wanted by. And that's because system D and our bit bake process does not really handle templated targets like this. It doesn't, during compile time, it doesn't really know how to install this service in this target because of the template template aspect. So what happens is you really the service gets put in the appropriate target as a part of the, the bit bake uh, recipe. Um, and that's just kind of a nuance. You know, if your system really only supports one instance, then you could just hard code at zero dot target and it would install this service appropriately. Um, but in general, the rule is, uh, and there's a, there's a bit bake recipe out there that, that within Phosphor State Manager that handles installing these services appropriately based on the number of chassis that you've defined within your system. So you kind of put this here just to give people uh, 
a general idea of, of where you're expecting this service to go. But if you don't have it templated or it's not a templated service and you put this, then the BitBeg process will install it for you in the appropriate target. So kind of a nuanced, complicated aspect of, of system D there and our use of it. All right, any questions up to this point? All right. So phosphor state management. So it really did start out as basically um, somewhat of a wrapper around system D. And so the basic idea was you've got three different phosphor state manager um, services. There's the BMC one. So this is the one that monitors the BMC, really just looking at that multi-user target that I was talking about. Um, the, the BMC has, I don't know, three different states. It's kind of not ready. So that's when you're, you're booting up all of those different services. It has ready, which is where we have successfully started all of the services within the multi-user target. Um, and it has quiesced, which is where um, one of the services in the multi-user target that is required has failed. So that's the BMC. Um, there's the chassis. So this is the state management of powering on and off your chassis. And that's um, what we were just showing earlier for examples. And then we've got the host and hypervisor state control. So mostly this is host. So this is the things that you need to do to start your, your host firmware on your system. Uh, some systems, I think maybe just IBM specific has hypervisor that's running on top of things. And so we also have some uh, an optional fourth application that you can start within state management that manages the, the state of that hypervisor. Um, OBMC util, this is a command line tool that you can run. Um, it's packaged, I think, as a part of the BMC package within state manager. And so that allows you to look at the state of all these different pieces, power on and off your system, look at some error logs. It's just, it's kind of a general purpose utility. And really underneath the covers is just using bus control. So it's just a wrapper to uh, the dbus to go out and look at this data. PSM also hosts the boot progress. So boot progress comes down, however it comes down, and, and that's hosted on the, the in, within the PSM repo on the host on the host object. Um, power restore. So this is the function that if you were to lose power, AC power to your server, and when the AC power comes back, there are certain servers that want a certain behavior. You know, they want to just they want to make sure it stays off. They want to mm -hmm. restore it to whatever the state was before, or some people just want it to always power it on. So there's functioning functionality built in the PSM to look at that behavior, determine if it was an AC power loss, um, and then to take the appropriate automatic behavior based on the, the behavior. The BMC reset reload, maybe more of an IBM term, but this is the this is where the BMC is reset and the chassis power is on, is already on, or the host is already running. And PSM handles detecting that and then basically getting all of the states back into the, the proper the proper state. There's some lab debug that's also built in to PSM. So the ability to control how often auto, how many auto reboots occur. So rebooting your server and stuff, um, different types of recovery paths. If your host does fail, do you want to try and recover or do you want to just fail? Stuff like that. Scheduled host transitions. So this is where you can go into PSM and you can say, hey, at this time in the future, I want to do this particular operation, uh, power off the system, power on the system, that type of thing. Pretty limited use. It's it's more of a special case situation where maybe people want to power their servers down uh, overnight and then automatically power it on in the morning type stuff. Um, quiesce and reboots within PSM. So this is handling failures of the host and basically the policy that we, we implement when we detect those. And then there's a standalone function within PSM that uh, monitors for particular, system, particular uh, system D services or system D targets. And if it sees them fail, um, it will take action. So system D does provide a Dbus API that you can subscribe to. So you can say, hey, system D, I want to know um, I want to know when these services are started or stopped or if they fail and the same thing with system D targets. And so PSM does subscribe to that signal and monitors for these um, 
these changes. And so basically the, the monitor target, it will um, generate a dump, it will generate an error, uh, it'll put the BMC potentially into a quiet state if, uh, if it's a critical service. And so for, <clears throat> for IBM, it was a way to really try and, and guarantee that if something fails, there's always a log and a dump for that situation. Um, all right, so all of these functions really interact, basically just interact with system D targets. That is the design of, of PSM to do that. And um, <coughs> excuse me, the people that interact with PSM, there, there are some functions like uh, LDM and fan control and such that do come in and interact with PSM. But really for the most part, it's BMC web. That's our web server with an open BMC that interacts with these dbus objects um, out on um, that are hosted by state management and uh, the host firmware that comes down and, and interacts with different pieces of these functions. All right, any questions on this picture? All right, so dbus details of Foster State Manager. So as I just kind of described with my really quick overview of Dbus, Dbus basically has the concept of a service. That's kind of like your application. Uh, it hosts objects, which are these paths, right? So it's kind of a um, object-oriented type path here out to the out to the object you're hosting. Those objects then have interfaces on them, and those interfaces can host properties or um, methods that you can call. To set things. So the general rule is, you know, if it's simple, just make it a, a property and people can set that property. And that's how powering on and powering off the system works through state management is you basically set properties uh, on these objects to power on and power off the system. And then you can basically read other properties to say, well, what is the state of it? And uh, that's really how PSM works here. So we've got the BMC, the chassis, the host, and in some cases, the hypervisor, they are instance-based as this X shows. Um, they were designed that way from the beginning. So you could potentially have multiple BMCs, multiple chassis, multiple hosts, multiple hypervisors uh, in a system. Uh, practically, I'm not, I think maybe a few people utilize this, um, the ability to do more than just a zero, but in most cases, it's, it's just a zero on here. And then basically these map to, you know, we were talking earlier about the instances like the OVMC host start or the OVMC chassis power on, you know, those, the instances that you pass to these targets match up to the instance of the object on Dbus. Um, so I put some links out here. I'll get these uh, charts posted somewhere for people so you could actually click on these links, but it, it just links out to some of the open BMC code to, to give examples of how we install these different services and targets and, and such, and how we put it in for you know custom machine pieces go into these same targets. All righty. So now we go into a few of the more complicated areas that I, I get a lot of questions on. And so this one, that we're talking about here is what happens when the BMC is reset when the chassis or the host is running. So remember earlier we looked at that service file that um, that basically would say, hey, don't run if this file is located out in the, the file system. That file indicates that chassis powers on. So there's also a similar file for the host. Um, and so this is just kind of explaining how that logic works. The general idea with with PSM is to not not hard code and try to remember things. It's to discover things. So you could say, well, I mean, if you could just say the last thing I remember is the chassis powers on. So if I get rebooted and I don't remember the chassis power being turned off, then I'm just going to say the chassis power is still on. And there's a lot of dangers to a design like that. And so PSM is really built to discover it, right? Go out and really read the the P good GPIO and see if power is really on. Um, and then also the design point is not to have a bunch of special code within PSM that says, oh, okay, wait a minute, this is a reset. So I'm gonna fake this out or do this. 
we still want to just run those same targets. We still want to run the OBMC chassis power on target. We still want to run the OBMC host start target because that's what the that's what the PSM applications look at. So they monitor those targets, and when they see those targets are completed, they change their state to say the chassis is on or the host is on. And same thing when you power off, it's monitoring those targets. And when those targets complete, it says chassis powers off or the, the host is stopped. And so the concept that, that are on here and the creation of these files are so that we can just run that standard code. We just, we start those targets. Well, first we discover is their chassis power on and is the host running? And if they are, we go out and we, we create these run open BMC files. And then we go ahead and we just start the chassis on and the, and the host start targets. And we know that the services within those will run appropriately with these condition path exists checks. So uh, at a high level, I don't, I don't think we need to read all the text here. I tried to really kind of describe it to people who are curious, but at a high level, that's, that's how PSM is designed and, and how it runs to determine these pieces. And it has these custom targets um, power reset and host reset that run these services that discover whether or not the chassis is on and whether or not the host is running. I guess it does deserve, deserve a little bit of um, description here. So how you determine if your host is running can really vary from system to system. And so it's not as easy as determining if your power is on. You basically just read a GPIO. So determining if your host was running um, required a more generic implementation. And so what happens is the PSM code goes out on Dbus and it looks for anything implementing this host, this condition.host firmware um, interface. And if it finds it, it calls it and says, hey, tell me if the tell me if the host firmware is running. If it doesn't find it, it just assumes that the host is not running. And so we've got, I think, three different implementations that I know of of this of this interface. So there's one that uses IPMI to talk to the host, in-band IPMI. There's one that uses PLDM. So PLDM is also an in-band protocol that we have within OpenBMC. And there was another one that actually used, I believe, GPIOs. So the determining if the host was running was actually based on some GPIOs. And so the beauty is it doesn't matter. You can implement it however your system runs, but if it does see, it does get a positive confirmation um, that the host is running, It'll go out and create this file, and that makes sure that we don't we don't do anything that we shouldn't do when we uh, when we synchronize up and start that host start target. Comments, questions. All right, the BMC quiesce state. So, from an IBM perspective, we have a. Um, pretty hard rule that you know really think everything needs to be running as expected and if it's not we need to alert somebody and get it fixed and so if a service fails within the bmc and we've identified it as a critical service which we identify most of the services as critical but if it if something does fail then we go into what we consider a bmc quest state um, and you know the basic rule is we don't really know. Well, you know we've generated an error, but it's really difficult to say what's the impact of this service failing to to a, a, a user of the system. And so we just basically say, hey, we've generated an error. We've probably generated a dump. Um, and you know the BMC is in a kind of undefined state, and that's what Quiest is now. And so within PSM, you can define for your system what those services are. There is a default one. Um, but you can override it from your your bit bake meta layer to to have whatever you want from a service perspective. Um, within system D, you know you do have restart policies. Uh, we have a we have one for OpenBMC that's pretty much used by all of our services, which I think says you know a service can restart two or three times within thirty seconds before it's considered to be failed. So you get kind of a few a few tries to restart. Uh, but we, if, if it does continue to fail, then we go into this BMC quest and, and it's really up to the user of the system and whatever your you know, maintenance and, and uh, how you manage that system policy is to be handled. Host quiesce is similar. So, you know, on that previous one, right? Remember at the beginning, I talked about how there's, you know, you've got your BMC state, you've got your chassis state, and you've got your host state. And they're all independent. 
and they're all based on on system D targets for the most part. Uh, so the host can also enter a quiet state, and so this is saying it's you know basically it's it's reached some sort of failure state, um, and it can happen for a variety of reasons. Um, some you know for example the target that starts the host uh, within that target you can have a what we call an on failure. Can so you can say you know if this target fails, which means one of my required services has failed within this target, then I want you to go system D. I want you to call this other target, and so what system D will do is call whatever you put for an on failure, which um, in the host start would be this host quiesce target. That's basically saying I want to I want to move my my host state to a quiesce state. Um, there are other examples where you know if we get a host timeout, so that's like a watchdog that watches the host as it boots. So the default in there is to say, hey, if if we if you know if this watchdog times out, then we also want to move to the to the host quiesce. And then we have services that also can detect different types of failures from the host, and it could also start this, this host quiesce target. However you get here, the state manager code monitors that target. And if it sees us go into the host quiesce target, it looks at a variety of things to figure out what to do next. Um, there's a reboot policy that you can have for your host that if it's enabled, uh, you can disable it completely. Uh, by default, it has a reboot count, which says, you know, try to reboot the host X amount of times. I think our default is is three, so the host will get three time, three chances to start. Um, but if it's disabled or we've already hit our limit, then we basically will just stay in that quiet state. And that is something that external clients can also see uh, through the Redfish API and take the appropriate action. And you know, the system will also do things. I, I think when we go into a, a permanent quiet state, we'll generate, you know, a debug dump of some sort. We'll generate uh, some sort of error log that says, hey, um, the system system has failed. And here, here's the data we have for it. All right, last page. Um, summary, tips and tricks. So, I remember, you know, there's been a lot of discussion in Discord over the over the last couple of years about Phosphor State Manager, and somebody noted that it's very complicated, uh, but it does provide an almost infinite number of ways to do stuff for your system. And uh, hopefully, this presentation has made it a little bit better to understand. But it is just complicated. You know, when you start breaking down your services and you start creating these targets and you have these dependencies between them, um, it's tough. But I do. I do feel like it's it's definitely been very useful uh, on a lot of our systems to be able to have this flexibility. Um, State Manager PSM does have a variety of features that we talked about, and you don't have to pull them all in. You know, um, you can pull in just the BMC management, or you could pull in just that system D target monitoring. You know, within Bitbake, there's sub packages that you can you can pull in depending on your system. So System D um, was created uh, to run everything in parallel. Yeah, um, and so if you let it, it's going to do that. And so one of the bugs that I see a lot is missing dependencies in service files or code not handling things not being there. So you kind of got to do one or the other. You need to make sure everything you need is started before you start yours, or your code needs to handle those services not being available. And, uh, and so one of the things that we've been doing recently in the community is we started doing dbus activations. So, for example, Mapper and Phosphor Logging, and I think Entity Manager, are Dbus activated. And so that's kind of neat, because it basically means if your application makes a call to a Dbus interface, and that service is not running, uh, System D underneath the covers will automatically start that service for you. And so it, it allows you to remove those, those dependencies we were looking at in the service file, the wants and after pieces. So I think as a community, we're starting to move towards that direction. Um, but you just need to be careful because if it's not, then you need to make sure you either handle it in your code or you got it in your service file. Um, learning the basics of system control and journal control are really critical. Uh, there's a lot of documentation out there. I mean, I use these other every day. Probably add bus control as well. Um, that's how you interact with Dbus. You know, those are the three things that just everybody needs to know how to use within OpenVMC. I think we've all got our cheat sheets of different commands and functions to, to use these pieces. Um, another thing is that sometimes it can be confusing. You're really just not sure where everything's um, 
going. And whoops, that path is wrong. Should be live system D system. Um, I get that fixed. But sometimes it's easier just to boot it up in QEMU and to go out into your or on your system if you can and just go out and just look. You know, I, I do that a lot where I just boot up the system similar to what we're looking at. You go out to your target, you do an LS and you see what the services are in there. And then you can start catting the services and trying to understand, you know, why isn't this one starting or why is this one running before this other one? And uh, that to me has just been the best way in a lot of times to just debug these pieces. Uh, and then at the end, I just have a link out to the BSM README. All right. Um, anybody have any questions or anything they want to talk about? Hey, Andrew, I had a question about if there's any guidelines of about using requires versus wants in uh, systemd service files, because it, it almost seems that, you know, the state manager relies heavily on sequencing that maybe at first thought that people may, may, may think, well, I, I don't want, for example, the start service to start if anything in the pre-start service uh, fails. Uh, so, so why having like a once versus a requires in, in general? Yeah, that's always been a tough one because some people mm -hmm. are like, if anything fails, I don't want my system to continue to boot, you know? So that would be the requires definition. Mm -hmm. But but then, and I think that's how we kind of started with everything. We're like, everything's requires, but then we kept running into situations where like, ah, oh, shoot, I can't believe that service, you know, failed my system to boot or power on. And so then it went into the wants and then, you know, another one went into mm -hmm. the wants. And so, you know, I think that's where we kind of came up with the system D, you know, the monitoring. So at least we'll get an error log if a service fails or something fails. Uh, but, you know, the, the policy started to go more towards, well, if my system can boot, I want it to boot. So really only put the stuff in the requires that are really required to boot the system. And so, uh, mm -hmm. and the same thing with like the BMC, the multi-user, right? Like, do you really want your BMC to end up in this not ready or quiet state because some, um, you know, random service that really wasn't needed didn't start properly. And that's why we tend to put the majority of our open BMC services in the wants of the multi-user versus the requires. But there's been no perfect answer. A lot of the times I think it depends on your system and how you want it, you know, what the ex expectation of your customers are. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I think overall, we don't really have a requires pretty much well anywhere, because like you said, we don't want to we want to go with the best case scenario, try to run as much as possible. Yeah, we have it for a few. I mean, like, you know, you can't, if you chassis power on, like there's a requires because, you know, if you can't run the service that powers on the chassis, then you don't, you're not going to get anywhere. But there's a lot of tertiary stuff that we start that, you know, we don't really need the power on the chassis. And so, yeah, that, that's where the debate starts. Anything else from people out there? All right. Well, thanks for joining in, everybody. Hey. Patrick, okay. thanks for recording. I've got one quick question. Yep. Um, so you had showed a page with the um, the control. Uh, I think it's interface. And I, I always get this backwards with system D, so I apologize if I'm saying the wrong word. Um, I think I mentioned this on Discord a couple months ago. That's not really defined mm -hmm. anywhere, right? That's like sort of legacy, sort of work in progress oh, yeah this, this control power yeah 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 that's the i think that's still hosted out in the skeleton repo yeah um, okay is, but also i guess for us for power control or phosphor power recently added it right i think there's two different places yeah um, but so yeah guess, it's not defined it it's not yeah anytime you see like this old org open bmc you know you got some old school code here okay normally it's the xyz um so this never made it into pdi you know phosphor dbus interfaces and uh yeah we're just waiting for somebody to go through and clean yeah. that up <laughs> okay yeah so i guess that's my question is is um i kind of copied what i think is the necessary bits to make something work and it seems to work fine um is that sufficient for my very silly use case or should I have expected it to be in PDI or it's just uh, it's on me to go and uh, get that done because I'm the one that's complaining about it. 
<laughs> yeah, that's usually the way it works in OpenBMC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the last one. Cool. But no, I think the beauty is like, is that, you know, this is Mapper. And so it's just, this whole thing is just saying, I don't care who hosts this, find somebody that hosts this, this, this object, tell me that service. And then I'm going to call it and say power on the system. And so, you know, if we ever change this service to be, you know, a PDI or something more, well, then if, if your code is just downstream, then you would be, you know, you'd probably get caught by that at some point. Yeah, but that, that's on me be... to test. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's okay. just the way it works. But um, yep. Yeah, we got okay. most of the skeleton cleaned up, but this one, this is the one piece that uh, that's left out there. Okay, yeah, this that's one always seemed a little weird. So I just want to make sure I understand um, why that is. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, sure. All right, going once, going twice. All right, thanks for joining everybody.